This video was brought to you by CuriosityStream. Throughout the past 20 years or so, the dominant narrative, especially in English-speaking media, has been that the EU is being run by three major powers. Germany, France, and when it was part of the EU, the UK. However, in a post-Brexit world, other countries like Poland, Italy, and Spain have become more influential. And in today's video, we'll be looking at Spain in particular and explaining why it's arguably become one of the big three. One of the major reasons for Spain's growing influence inside the EU, along with its strong economy, is its lack of Euroscepticism. Even the major parties, which are the furthest to the left and to the right, have not made leaving the EU or the Eurozone a stated political ambition. And this lack of Euroscepticism is striking, as in the past decade, Spain has been hit by economic and migrant crises. It also suffered severely from the economic crash of 2008, with youth unemployment peaking at a whopping 55%. In addition, Spain has been at the forefront of numerous European migrant crises, and since 2018 has received more refugees and migrants than any other EU country. As such, Spain has all of the ingredients needed to witness an emergence of a populist Eurosceptic party, and yet it hasn't happened. Now, that's mainly for two reasons. Firstly, their fascist history. That's because Spain applied to join the EC in 1977, less than two years after Franco's death, with them eventually joining in 1986. As such, Spanish democracy and EU membership have become pretty indistinguishable from one another. The second reason that Euroscepticism hasn't really kicked in, though, is the fear of separatism. That's because if Catalonia were to become an independent country, it's likely that the Madrid government would be able to veto Catalonia's entry into the Union. So there's an argument to be made that EU membership isn't an erosion of national sovereignty, but instead a guarantee of keeping Spain united as one nation. Overall then, this lack of Spanish Euroscepticism has led to a pro-EU political consensus across all major parties, which has given the country breathing room to become more powerful within the EU. So how is Spain taking the lead? Well, let's look at two areas, the EU's internal policy and the EU's foreign policy. Let's start internally. Throughout its membership, Spain has actively shaped some of the most important internal EU policies. And more recently, it's even been driving the EU's energy policy. That's significant too, because Spain has the potential to replace Russia as the EU's main natural gas hub. The country already contains the EU's largest storage and regasification capacity, with 90% of this coming from Algeria. As of yet, though, there's no connection from Spain to the Central European gas system, but Spain is desperately trying to change this, and as such, Germany and Spain have been actively discussing a new gas pipeline to connect the two. So Spain has been shaping EU policy for years now, but what about foreign policy? Well, again, this falls into three major areas. In Africa, Spain has launched a new policy to strengthen economic ties called Focus Africa 2023. This aims to forge closer economic and institutional ties with Africa through peace and security, sustainable development, economic growth, and institutional strengthening. For example, within the remit of peace and security, the project aims to strengthen Spain's participation in EU initiatives, such as leading rapid action groups in Africa, which strengthen the link between security forces and the civilian population, and taking part in joint investigation teams to combat terrorism and trafficking. And by increasing economic development in the area, Spain's commercial influence could also potentially lead to a reduction in the flow of migrants and refugees from Northern Africa into the EU, which will be welcomed by many within the Union. 
So for all intents and purposes, Focus Africa 2023 is an EU strategy which has Spain leading the whole affair, leaving the country more committed to Africa and with an increased influence in the region and thus increased leverage within the EU. Next up, let's discuss Latin America, where due to its linguistic and cultural ties, Spain has always been hugely influential. In 2020, they helped to ease visa requirements for Latin Americans inside the EU Schengen area under the ETIAS system. Later in 2021, the Spanish foreign minister organized with fellow native Josep Borrell, the EU's foreign policy chief, a successful conference of donors to support the needs of Venezuelan migrants. This conference led to the EU Commission pledging 147 million euros for immediate humanitarian assistance, as well as medium and longer term development assistance and conflict prevention interventions for the Venezuelan refugees, migrants and host countries. Under the leadership of Josep Borrell, the EU now has plans for 2023, which could mobilize up to 8 billion euros of EU investment into Africa. With fears of Latin America and the Caribbean increasingly coming under the control of China and Russia, Spain's Prime Minister has made Latin America a prime target for him and Europe as a whole. As such, Sanchez is holding a summit for the leaders of the EU, Latin America and Caribbean in Madrid in the second half of 2023, coinciding with their presidency of the EU Council. Ultimately, any development in EU-Latin America relations will mainly occur via Spain, who sees itself as Latin America's best ally within the EU. Finally, Spain has also been a leading supporter of Ukraine within Europe, and has provided the country with substantial military and humanitarian aid. Early this year, Spain sent over 200 tonnes of military material, the largest shipment ever made by the country, and has also recently announced a new military package, including air defense missiles, armored vehicles, ammunition, military advisors, and fuel. And in terms of humanitarian aid, Spain has been one of the most charitable nations inside the EU, with over 130,000 Ukrainians receiving temporary protection, and a lump sum of 400 euros per month in aid from the government. So if you combine all of this foreign policy action together, as well as their leadership within Europe, especially on energy, you can see how Spain is really carving itself a niche. By believing in Europe more than most other countries and staying committed to the vision, they've been able to grow in their leadership potential and potentially take over from countries like the UK as they step away. We'll have to wait and see how it plays out in the years ahead. But if you can't wait for more TLDR, then you can find more exclusive TLDR content only on Nebula. That's a streaming service we made with our creator friends, and we can find a whole bunch of TLDR videos, which will never make it to YouTube. You can also find a ton of our other videos there ad-free and get some of our videos early before anyone else. Signing up also really helps the channel and helps us make more content, not just for Nebula subscribers, but for everyone else too. So if you want more from us and support the channel, then you can get access to Nebula for less than $15 a year with the Nebula Curiosity Stream bundle. Let me explain. We partnered with the superb streaming service Curiosity Stream, where you can find a bunch of great documentaries about all kinds of fascinating topics. Now, if you sign up to their service today using our link, then you'll get Nebula included absolutely free. That's both streaming services for less than a dollar a month. A crazy good deal to get all of these documentaries on Curiosity Stream and more from TLDR on Nebula. If you're interested, then the link is in the description. And thanks so much for your support.